Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright, a consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video, um, highlighting the benefits of our recently developed Waxscape, which should be available in the next 8 to 12 weeks, we're really hoping. There's been a slight delay in terms of the, the, uh, the tooling for the speculum. Uh, there are global uh, issues at the moment, um, there's uh, supply chains, but we are making good progress so I, I shall keep you uh, updated in terms of uh, more of a precise launch date and we have here a very interesting case um, we're commencing with the patient's left ear but however it's their right ear that um, is really really interesting they've got this clay type of earwax um, it's matted uh, they had been using drops for a while now and that can sometimes be counterproductive because when you've got an impaction such as this, uh, the earwax drops are, yes, of course, it will soften the wax, but it's not going to remove the wax. And in fact, for this particular patient, the use of the drops exacerbated their symptoms because the ear was so already blocked, it had absorbed the drops, and it, uh, which caused the wax to expand and create more of an occlusion which created um, more of a block sensation, a bit more oltalgia, and more reduced hearing. In, in addition, they, they have tinnitus and it exacerbated their tinnitus. So I've just put some um, a fresh uh, dose of uh, some olive oil spray. And what that has done is just um, change the consistency. And you can see all those hairs there, they are matted. And the patient had been using some... Uh, cotton birds uh, and whenever you've got matted earwax it is a bit more tricky to remove and that's because it's harder to get suction grip and what I'm doing here I'm just working around the edge I'm just trying to loosen uh, this uh, adhered wax and keratin off the canal wall you can see we've been really gentle here just want to go up against the canal wall and slowly then move away so I've mobilized the the bottom of this wax plug I'm now trying to detach it from the anterior canal wall so this is the patient's left ear and, and if you do, do stay tuned because the right ear is really really interesting um, the patient has got a very probable um, canal cleshiotoma and they are very rare but um, I was just I've just edited a, another procedure using the eye clear scope uh, which I'm gonna be uploading today hopefully um, so if you uh, do, do follow if you want to watch that one as well you can visit uh, the hair clinic youtube channel or uh, visit our the hair clinic facebook um, page or instagram page or a tiktok i think it's on tiktok actually it's it's you have to find it under the wax whisperer but with that one um, i used the eye clear scope and that patient also had a probable canal pressure term and they're very rare but that's two potential canal cholesterol terms in a day. So you can see I've managed to remove that large wax plug. We've got great magnification there of this patient's left eardrum. That's the short process of the malleus. Just adjusted the focus. We can see all the blood vessels. Just having a good inspection, and that's nice and clear. So that's the left ear. Now this is the patient's right ear. Now this right ear was slightly narrower. I put some olive oil spray immediately because uh, the consistency was the same as their left ear. You can see that oil there. It's glossy in appearance. Uh, just so you're aware, I'm using our 4.25 millimeter specular here. That's going to be our standard size, I imagine. We have got a smaller speculum, which is a 3.5 millimeter. And then we've got two larger ones. We've got a five millimeter um, speculum for larger ears and then a 5.75 which would probably be more useful for mastoid cavities in large ear canals so with this side it's a bit more difficult to remove um i'm having to just again just make this little wriggle mo movement just to detach the wax from um, the sides of the ear canal it is a, a lot more matted this side the ear canal is a bit more narrower and the core of this wax was a bit firmer. Now, you may already start to see at the bottom, as I'm lifting this up, um, there's a bit of discharge underneath this plug of wax. You'll see a bit of otter ear, a bit of green discharge. It's a bit of an infection. And that will become more apparent in a moment as I remove this. Now, what I've managed to get here, I've managed to obtain a suction grip. And I don't want to lose this suction grip. You can see I did momentarily lose it there. 
and I'm just going to re-establish the suction grip and then I'm going to very, very slowly bring this wax plug forwards and as I am, I'm having to manipulate this wax around the curvature of the ear canal, so the first and second bend. As you can see, I'm bringing this forwards. So they've got a really narrow entrance of the ear canal, a bit more narrower than their left end. Here, I've got this suction grip and I don't want to let go of that now. And so a good tip is just really hover over the wax. Don't just try to be patient, uh, slowly bring it away. I forgot to take a, a, an image of the, the plugs of white earwax um, after the procedure, and they were extremely large. Uh, I just obviously there's more focus on this now. So you can see all this yellow, greeny discharge here. Um, the eardrum is visible. Now I'm just focusing more on this discharge. You can see there's a bit of wax in the distance as well. So we will remove that. But I, I want to see what's underneath this. Um, it could just be, as I said, it could just be a layer of dead skin that's slightly infected and underneath that it's all healthy but we don't know and it's really important that uh, if possible we try and remove so you can see underneath that the the, the discharge um the artery you can start seeing a thick layer of epithelial skin and beneath this we've got a very large ulceration um it's very medial um and essentially, they've got a, a, a large, widened area of exposed and erosed bone. And it, to me, I, I do, but I think it would need to be diagnosed by an ENT specialist and it'd probably go under a CT scan. But I do think that it's very likely to be a canal cholesteatoma. So what I'm just doing, I'm just getting this wax off the eardrum. I just want to clear that out of the way so I can just refocus back onto this canal clash tome and again if you continue to watch i'm going to start cleaning this out and you'll see the exposed bone so just a bit of keratin just near the entrance i'm just going to change the focus i just want to clear the way a bit really and then so i can focus on that region um, i am going to also show you a comparison video of uh, the eye clear scope examining that area of exposed bone and th there is no competition in terms of view um even when it comes to an ENT microscope and an endoscope, you just can't cannot compete with an endoscope because it offers this wide panoramic view. It's almost like you're inside the ear and you're looking around. Um, so the wax scope is not designed to um, compete with a, with an endoscope in terms of the wide field of view. Instead, it's the next best alternative, I feel. Um, I've got an ENT microscope in the clinic and it's, it's, it's an operating microscope. Um, it's a very good op mi microscope. And yeah, it provides brilliant magnification. Um, but similarly, but similarly to the wax gate, the view's a lot more narrow than an endoscope, and that's because you're using a speculum. Um, I've used head loops in the past, uh, and in fact, that's what inspired me to develop the eye clear scope, the wireless endoscope, because with the head loops, I really, really struggled uh, to see um, more medially towards the the inner third and on the eardrum. In fact, I probably would really struggle to do this with 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 the head loops I had at least anyway, and so uh, an ENT microscope is and an endoscope are the two gold standards uh, methods I feel of wax removal. But uh, an ENT microscope weighs a ton; it's very expensive, and it does take a high level of training, like an endoscope, to use. So the wax scope I feel offers you a great. Um, uh, I would compared to the. Um, the microscope I've got, I would say, uh, in terms of wax removal, it, 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 it's the equivalent, if not slightly better, I feel. And I'm trying to say all this without being biased, of course. I've got um, commercial interest there. I've developed the waxcape. And, but I'm being, um, if I'm being really objective, I really do feel that. I'm really confident in what we've achieved here. Um, so you can see now, I'm clearing the way now. Um, there's a bit of a crusted, hardened keratin. There still is a bit around the edge. But we're beginning to see uh, this dip in the ear canal, this erosion. You can see the bone there. It's ex that's exposed bone. And we're going to be really, really careful. When you've got exposed bone like this, it can be really uncomfortable for the patient if we make contact. Now, I don't uh, remove every little last speck. And two reasons. It's not always possible to do that. When you've got really hardened keratin, it's, it's embedded. It's like stone. And 
that really will need to be seen by ENT and sometimes that just needs to be um, treated surgically. Uh, they will need to go to a CT scan, no doubt as well. But also there was a stage during the procedure near the top part of that ridge that when I positioned the suction probe there, that bone was, it was almost loose. It, it is, it, I could compare it to uh, a loose slab uh, on, your, on, your, on your footpath or uh, a loose um, roof tile. The bone actually was moving and just there, just that top bit. Um, I don't know if you saw that um, with the tip of the suction probe when I just touched the, the top part of the ear canal there. So you can see that that ridge is the where the ear canal should be and it drops down. So you've got like a... Um, uh, a, a massive ditch there um, and there's some hardened keratin within that and it's this region I've just got to be careful about because I could feel the bone actually move around it was unstable it's almost, it's almost like a cliff edge here so this shouldn't be there that should all be uh, bone and on top of that it should be uh, a layer of skin so I'm, we're looking really into the temporal bone here There we are. I don't know if you just saw that. Um, the skin layer on top did move, but I felt like the bone was very unstable there. So we'll just be, be careful. I just want to avoid that area. Again there. So what are the causes of that in this particular patient? This is the question the patient asked me. Um, you can develop a canal cholesterol If that is the case, we're, we're not, it's not confirmed yet, but uh, some patients have an anatomical defect of the ear canal where they've got a trench, a dip uh, within the ear canal. And as the skin migrates off the eardrum um, towards the entrance of the ear canal, it can tr get trapped and collect within uh, that anatomical defect of the ear canal and that skin then gets infected, it forms a plug and it can then in fact, uh, we get, it can expose the bone um, of the floor of the ear canal, the temporal bone, and then the bone can get infected and that infection can spread and it's something that needs to be treated. Um, can be quite dangerous if left alone uh, because it can start uh, affecting your jaw and it can go move superiorly towards the brain. You can see the eardrum there. It's nice and healthy itself. Um, that's the exposed bone area so there is some embedded keratin just there on the on the cliff side of it but again I, I don't want to go into that because it just felt a bit unstable so we've given an ENT ref referral and here's the endoscope view yeah, so it's a bit you can see actually that it's a lot wider but the view is very similar to the wax scope in that sense you can see all that erosion of the, the bony part of the ear canal but I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And um, if you are interested in the Waxgate, please do email info or the iClearscope, not just the Waxgate. Um, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you.